Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to episode 1 of the Bucket Coding Packets mini-series. This has been a highly requested and highly anticipated series, so I'm glad that I'm finally able to get, uh, to get around to it. So, um, in this series, we're going to be looking at different uh, ways that you can use packets uh, in Bucket to do different things um, to players and to the server that you couldn't normally do. Now this first video we're not going to actually be writing any code but I'm going to explain um, exactly how packets work, kind of a basic um, overview about that so that it'll make more sense and when we go into this and we're talking about um, you know packets and exchanges uh, then we'll know exactly uh, what I'm talking about. So um, I have a little setup here in Photoshop. I just have a server up here and a computer down here. So this uh, represents the Minecraft server up here, and this represents the computer uh, of some user um, who's playing the game. So first of all, what is a packet? A packet is sort of what it sounds like. It's a small piece of information. Um, and these are important in server-to-client connections. So when you connect to a Minecraft server, you type in the IP address and some port. Uh, the port by default is 25565, so if you don't type one in, that's what it is. Um, but when you start a Minecraft server, you are, uh, you are listening in on a particular port of your IP address. So when I go on my computer here, and I type in an IP address and hit connect, this server is constantly listening and waiting for new people to connect. So then, uh, you know, when I connect, a connection is established, and the connection remains open until I quit. So there's an active connection in between these two. Um, there's an active connection in between these two uh, devices here. So pardon my terrible drawing, but um, yeah. Oh, it's it on the wrong layer. Okay, so um, we have this, oh, sorry. Okay, so we have uh, this kind of idea of a connection that remains open. And when we think about a Minecraft server, there are a lot of people on. There could be thousands of different people. And so when you're playing in single player, and let's say that you break a block or you place a block, well, you did it, and the block will uh, appear or go away, and you're good. But if you do it, and you're on a multiplayer server, then all of the other people who are connected need to know that you just destroyed a block so that the block will go away on their computer. And the server needs to know that you did that so that it can alert everyone else, and also um, so the bucket plugins can handle it, and you can have you know your listeners um, in your bucket plugins. So this is accomplished in little pieces of data called packets. So let's start off with the initial stuff. So when you connect to a server, there is uh, what's called a handshake. And what happens is when you begin the connection, you have this kind of empty connection. And the player or the computer has no idea what's going on on the server. Uh, I suppose, you know, when you look at your server list, you can tell how many people are on, but you have no idea, you know, where all these people are, what their skins are, what their names are, what they're doing, where they're looking, and stuff like that. And the server doesn't know anything about you. It doesn't know your username, um, and it doesn't know your skin, and it doesn't know where you're going to spawn, and uh, all of those different things. So this right here, this little picture, is going to represent my packet. And again, packets are just little pieces of data, and I'm just going to move this packet around. Um, but you can imagine that if I stick a packet somewhere, that the data is received and processed, and then uh, you know the packet is no longer necessary. So when I initially connect here, um, the computer will create a packet that will essentially say, you know, I'm connecting, this is my username, and all of that, and that'll be sent to the server, and the server will recognize, okay, there's a user that is trying to connect, and uh, that will be handled in, I think, the player login event, which is called before the player join event. Uh, so once that happens, the server needs to send back to the computer 
a list of all of the players and where they are and what they're doing and, and all of that stuff. So that information is sent back. Uh, and then also information about the world, of course. So all of this information comes back and the computer is able to render the world and all of the people and, you know, the direction they're working. And then it'll also grab their skins from the Minecraft servers um, and then deal with that. But now we've established the handshake. The user is successfully on the server and the server is aware of this. Uh, but let's say that we have uh, another computer. Let me just see if I can duplicate this. Cool. So let's say that we have a second computer. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. So we have a second computer now. And the first computer sends the handshake, and the handshake occurs, and some packets go back and forth, and now uh, it's connected. But over here, on this other computer, we need to know that the user connected. We need to, you know, render the user with their skin and where they are and what they're doing. Um, so when I log in, and I send this packet that says that I logged in, the uh, server will then create a new packet um, that represents the fact that a player logged in and it'll distribute it to all of the other servers. So when this, or sorry, all the other players. So when this other player receives the packet, they will now know that some player has joined and here's where they are and here's their username and, and all of that. And then the Minecraft client will um, update appropriately. It'll display them in the tab list, it'll display them in the overworld, um, and all of that stuff. And again, everything that you do in Minecraft that applies to other people or to the server is a packet or, or is sent in a packet. So if I'm over here and I break a block, uh, then that is sent off to the server. The server will call the block break event in bucket. And then it will also send this information to all of the other uh, clients, all the other players, so that they're aware that this block is now broken. And the Minecraft client will break that block so that they can then see. And this is how uh, pretty much any kind of connection between two endpoints works, especially uh, when the connection is kept alive for the whole time. This isn't like a website where you, know, you connect and you load a page once. This connection remains open until you quit the client or you disconnect. So there's a constant packet exchange. And if you think about it, when you have you know a thousand players, um, you have to be exchanging you know, millions of packets about all of the different things that these players are doing. So that is an explanation of packets. They're, you know, simple pieces of data that give information to a server or a client um, based on what another client or server is doing. So where does this come in with the series? So all of the bucket stuff that we do um, will generate packets so you know if you have a player run a command it will generate a packet that they run the command and then it'll be sent up to the bucket server to be handled um, and all of these different things and then we have events that will handle for this data so when the server receives a packet like oh a player quit or joined or broke a block then we can handle the information in our code uh, but what we can also do is we can create artificial packets. We can create packets and say, we can essentially fake that things happened. We could say, uh, here's a packet that says that a block was destroyed, even if it wasn't destroyed. And if we send that packet out, then the client will figure, okay, this block must have been destroyed but that's not the case. So we can create these fake packets up here on the server and send them out. And this can do a lot of different things. One classic example is effects. Um, so you can make certain effects appear uh, with packets. You just send the packet that says uh, maybe you know someone just used a potion. And even if they didn't just use a potion, it would still display the potion effect or you know anything like that. So in this series, or in the next episodes, we're going to look at some different packets and some different um, things that you can do with them. So before you continue with this series, make sure that you watch, um, make sure that you watch, I have a uh, Java, advanced Java video on 
um, obfuscation. So watch that because that will come into play here. And I also have an advanced Java video on what was it again? I'm drawing a blank. Uh, I have an advanced Java video on reflection, which also might come in handy here. So watch obfuscation and reflection because those will both be helpful uh, when we start looking at packets. And most importantly, let me know in the description what you want to do with packets. If there are any particular examples, maybe things you've seen on other servers or things that you want to um, attempt, and I would be happy to take your requests um, and do them because it's a very open idea. I just want to know in what direction I should take it. So uh, that's an explanation about packets in general and also about packets as they apply to Minecraft. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to see in this series. And if you like this video, click the like button. I'll see you guys soon with some coding. Bye for now.